Okay, so I had a little bit of unintentional foreshadowing there about the next topic that we want to cover, um, which is enthalpy. Um, so enthalpy is abbreviated with a capital H, and we really never are calculating enthalpy as sort of a standalone quantity. We're calculating it as a change that occurs over um, a process. So there's always a delta. So there's a triangle here, the Greek letter delta in front of the H. So enthalpy, we usually abbreviate as delta H for change in enthalpy. The technical definition of enthalpy is it's the heat energy transferred at constant pressure. Um, things can get a little more complicated if the pressure is changing. For instance, if a gas is expanding, um, that may be, that's a process that may be doing work. Um, as well as transferring heat energy. That's a little more complicated. We're not going to go too deeply into that at this point um, in the chemistry class. Um, I think a better way to think about enthalpy is that enthalpy is really describing the potential energy in a chemical system. Um, a change in enthalpy could um, relate to a loss of potential energy in the structure of the compounds associated with a reaction. So if we go from reactants to products and the enthalpy change is a negative, that would mean we've lost some potential energy in that um, arrangement. And that is going to be something that corresponds to an increase in kinetic energy or a release of heat. Um, temperature is going to go up. Um, in the opposite case, if the um, enthalpy is positive, right, that would mean there's more potential energy in the products than there were in the reactant. So potential energy, enthalpy has gone up. That's going to require that energy to have come from somewhere, and that will have come from the kinetic energy of the surroundings. So we'll have to have a, a consequent reduction in kinetic energy in that case. Okay? And because of those two situations, we really want to be aware of the sign of the enthalpy change. So if enthalpy is negative, that means energy is transferred as heat from the system to surroundings. We call that an exothermic reaction. So exo for outside. So this is heat is going out. If enthalpy is positive, that means energy is transferred as heat from the surroundings to the system, system being our reaction. This is called an endothermic reaction, so endo for inside. So heat is going in here in this particular case, right? So it's helpful to keep that in mind. Negative enthalpy, exothermic reaction, positive enthalpy, endothermic reaction. Now, what we're going to want to do, in addition to that kind of evaluation of what's happening in the system, is generally is calculate the enthalpy or relate it to a process. And in that light, um, I think it's a helpful way to think about what we're doing in this chapter to recognize there are three types of enthalpy problems. I'm going to break them down as being categories or in each of these three categories. And I think from your perspective, right, what you want to be able to do is once we get to the test is to recognize how to do the problem. If you think about it like this, right, it should be pretty easy to recognize what you're expected to do in terms of that problem and how enthalpy is going to relate to that problem. So keep that in mind as we're going through. There'll be a very different set of information provided depending on what type of problem we're looking at. Now the first type of problem here with the one there um, is just giving us information about how an enthalpy change is associated with a chemical reaction. So in this case, we're given a reaction, right? Water in the gas phase is breaking apart into hydrogen and oxygen, both also in the gas phase. And right there, we're given the enthalpy change associated with that reaction. So delta H, there's a little degree sign here, which means standard conditions. Um, standard versus non-standard conditions is a little more complicated, something we will talk about when we get to a second chapter on thermodynamics in Chem 2, if you stick around for Chem 2. Um, and then a little subscript RxN to say this is for a reaction. We'll see there are other types of enthalpy that we can define that aren't specifically related to a reaction. So in this case, that's positive 241.8 kilojoules per mole. And notice the units on the bottom here. The units on enthalpy can be a little confusing. Um, we'll tend to write them out really explicitly at the beginning. And then once you kind of understand, we'll leave off the per mole reaction part of it. But this, it's important to recognize that this energy is associated with this reaction. So if we're comparing this energy to quantities here, the amount of material that appears in the equation relates to this much energy. So 
a positive sign here means this energy had to be put into this reaction. So this is an endothermic reaction. So we could say, well, you got to add 241.8 kilojoules for every mole of water that reacts. We could also say, well, you've got to add 241.8 kilojoules for every half a mole of oxygen that's going to be produced. So the stoichiometry of the reaction is important. Right? So this leads to several different factors we can relate to this equation. We could relate our reactant, one mole of water, to the quantity of heat, 241.8 kilojoules. Right? Or we could flip that over, 241.8 kilojoules would relate to one mole of water right? but like I said with uh, with the oxygen it's only half a mole so we would have half of a mole of O2 would relate to that same quantity of energy because right? enthalpy is describing the relationship to that whole reaction that could flip over as well or invert and hydrogen is one mole as well we could relate the quantity of hydrogen that's produced in this reaction to that quantity of heat as well. Now, um, this, um, I also described stoichiometry, stoichiometry and multiplicity here. Um, that's the difference between this one being one mole, this one being half a mole. But the other thing that's important to recognize about enthalpy is it does have a directionality. If this forward reaction um, requires us to add 241.8 kilojoules of heat, if we would do this reaction in the opposite direction, right? If we took hydrogen, combined it with oxygen, and turned them into water, we would just change the sign of the enthalpy. So if it requires 241.8 kilojoules to, for this reaction to go forward, it would release 241.8 kilojoules if the reaction goes in the backward direction. Right? And that's important to think about as well because that will come up in the future. Okay, let's go on to one more problem here on this video. We've got some time. So anyway, this first type of problem, right? If you see a reaction and then you see its enthalpy, like right, right we see here in this problem, right, and like I showed back here in the first set. That means you're going to be relating something about that quantity of material to that energy, right? That is why you would see it set up like that in the problem. And in this example, um, we're told acetic acid here, which is the product, um, is made industrially by the reaction of methanol and carbon monoxide. Those are the two reactants. And we're asked two different questions here. If you produce one liter of acetic acid, and we're given its density, that will be helpful, um, how much energy as heat would be evolved? Okay, now notice that's a negative enthalpy change. That means heat is being produced. So heat is being evolved by this reaction. Um, but if we make one liter of acetic acid, um, so I'm gonna use the formula here. That might be something we need as we go along. Um, one liter of acetic acid, and I want to change to quantity of heat that would be produced. So I'm in liters. I've got the density here. I can get use that to get to mass. So um, one liter would be a thousand milliliters. Right? And then from milliliters, I could go to my density. 1.044 grams of acetic acid per milliliter. And I stopped writing acetic acid because I'm recognizing I'm gonna have trouble fitting it. So we're still talking about acetic acid here, 1.044 grams of acetic acid per milliliter of acetic acid. Once we get to grams here, now we can use molar mass. So I'll put the formula back in here because it'll be helpful for calculating the molar mass. One mole of acetic acid, how many grams would that be? Well two carbons, um, there are two oxygens, and there are four hydrogens. Now watch that because it's a structural type formula where the hydrogens are not all together, so make sure you count them all. So carbon we know is 12.01, so two would be 24. Oxygen is 16, so two of those would be 32. Hydrogen is 1.01, .01, so times four would be 4.04. And that would be zero, carry the one, that would be 60.06 .06 grams. So 60.06 .06 grams of acetic acid would be one mole of acetic acid. Now, when we get to moles, we can use the enthalpy because remember, enthalpy is scaled to moles however they appear in that equation. So in this case, 
for every mole of acetic acid that's produced, this equation, this reaction, is going to generate 359 kilojoules of energy. So 359 kilojoules goes on top. One mole of acetic acid is going to go on the bottom. Now, this should be a positive number because enthalpy being negative means heat is released, right? And that's what the problem asks, how much heat is evolved. So evolved and released being synonymous here. Um, so even if your reaction is endothermic, you're generally going to want a positive number here because if your reaction is endothermic, the question is probably going to say how much heat is required or how much heat needs to be added. So, but it's a bigger issue when there's a negative up here. You don't want to claim a negative uh, mass in particular if you're calculating how much material you need. Okay, let's punch all this in. 1,000 times 1.044 divided by 60.06 .06 and times 359. So this would be 6,240 kilojoules and it is three significant figures going back to the volume we started with so no decimal needed after that uh, zero there at the end of that value okay there's a second problem here but we're going to have to move that one to the next video um, but we do want to look at right what if we start with heat what should we do then with this first type of enthalpy problem